Hi, it's Bob Hoopscher, and this is the Gaining Perspective Podcast, where we bring you insightful conversations with some of the top thought leaders in the investment advisor profession and investment management industry. I am the founder of Advisor Perspectives. Many investors view real estate as an attractive long-term investment opportunity that plays an important role in portfolio diversification. With that in mind, Columbia Threadneedle Investments recently announced the expansion of its exchange-traded fund offerings with the launch of the Columbia Research Enhanced Real Estate ETF, ticker symbol CRED, CRED. The fund offers investors and and allocators an accessible, research-driven way to gain exposure to the real estate asset class. REITs have a history of low correlations and attractive long-term returns and have a strong historical performance record during high inflation. According to a recent Columbia Threadneedle survey, 93% of financial advisors plan to maintain or increase their real estate allocations over the next 12 to 24 months. So my guest today is Mark Zaitoun as Chief Operating Officer, North America at Columbia Threadneedle Threadneedle Investments. Mark is responsible for helping to develop and implement North America operating principles, alignment, and business execution across the U.S. intermediary and North American institutional businesses. And as Head of Strategic Beta, Mark oversees the firm's Strategic Beta platform, which currently includes its suite of exchange-traded funds. So, Mark, with that introduction, tell me about your career path, what led you to Columbia Threadneedle, your role, and maybe just a little more about Columbia Threadneedle's ETF solutions. Thanks, Bob. It's a heck of an intro. I don't even know that I can follow that up. I joined Columbia Threadneedle in 2016 uh, based on an acquisition of a small smart beta a boutique shop called Emerging Global Advisors uh, that had started before I even joined it. Um, and the number of us who were at that EGA, uh, Emerging Global Advisors, came also here to Columbia Threadneedle and have continued on in, in, in various roles. And we came to Columbia Threadneedle not as a bolt-on strategy for, you know, let's, let's add ETFs to the mix, but as an integrated capability around launching a different version of what we're currently doing. And so the idea of our product development theory is on an alpha beta continuum, advisors and clients have lots of choices every day on how far discretionarily they want to go on that continuum. Price tends to follow that. So the more you seek alpha, the price that more expensive things tend to be. On the other end, you have pure beta like the S&P, which you can basically get for three basis points today. What we observed was a client preference of begrudging acceptance for cheap, but they want quality. So we thought that we would build a smart beta suite that was infused with that research quality that our active managers use, but provided at a more cost efficient price and in a transparent setting. To wit, the PMs that we work with on the active traditional products are the ones that build the index that the ETFs will track. So in that way, you're really tapping into the competency. And when it comes to real estate, Bob, which I'm sure is one of your next questions on this, it made a lot of sense that a firm that's got close to 30 billion in real estate assets should get involved in building a REIT ETF. And that's what we did. Well, let's talk about real estate. So you just launched your first REIT ETF. It's the Columbia Research Enhanced Real Estate ETF. As I mentioned, the symbol is CRED. What is the strategy behind CRED? What was it designed to do? In in response to the many surveys that we do with advisors, we understand that there's a perennial frustration with, on the one hand, tracking a benchmark, and on the other hand, not being able to make any changes to that benchmark given individual preferences. And that doesn't, in and of itself, is oxymoronic, right? Like, how, how can that be? But it is. People wish to tweak benchmarks. Now, when you scratch that a bit more, you realize that what people really want is they just don't want to be left behind. And they want someone overseeing the benchmark that provides a little quality. So what we did, and we've done this a number of times in different asset classes, proud that it works here. You know, the the, the granddaddy Mac universe benchmark, the FTSE NARIT, and we overlaid our research 
and we got rid of the stuff that we don't like because we know that avoiding pitfalls probably is more alpha accretive than doubling down on a good name. So we take the FTSE NARI, we eliminate the names that we don't like from a research perspective, those that are called sell and strong sell. And then with the rest, the remaining consist constituents, we weight them not based on their market cap because that's yesterday's growth, but we're, we weight them towards the opportunity as defined by Again, another part of our research, and this is the uh, development side of real estate, and they have favored geographies, location, 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 right? So what we do is we crack open the REITs, we see where the REITs are invested, and we overweight those REITs that have favorable geographic locations, and we underweight the ones that don't. And similarly, Bob, just to make the point that people buy real estate for income, we do the same thing with income. So those REITs that tend to yield, yield more will have a greater weight than those that tend to yield less. Let's pause for a couple of minutes for a word from our sponsor. I know that you already enjoy our content from advisor perspectives every day. So why not use our award-winning articles, commentaries, and charts to streamline your communications with clients and prospects? My team and I introduced AP Premium last summer, and we've been blown away by the response from the advisor community. Keep listening for an exclusive code to get $10 off our premium service. You won't find the in-depth, sophisticated market analysis and charts like Advisor Perspectives anywhere else. This information can be invaluable to help your clients understand complex topics. Let's say a client asks a question about their estate plan. Instead of spending time researching and drafting a long-winded response, quickly grab any number of related articles from our library and share it in a personalized way. AP Premium gives you the power to add your logo and a personalized message to any piece of content and share it directly with your clients and prospects. As always, we appreciate your support of our efforts to bring excellence to financial journalism. And as a thank you, I'm offering a one-time $10 discount for new premium members to be taken off your first monthly or annual payment. Just go to advisorperspectives.com forward slash member. That's advisorperspectives.com forward slash member. And use the code PODCAST2022. That's podcast 2022, all caps, at checkout. And now back to our podcast. So you mentioned that it's based off of the FTSE NARI uh, index, but reading up on this last night, uh, I read that it also tracks the Beta Advantage Lionstone Research Enhanced Re-Index. So explain what that index is and how that relates to the construction process that you just outlined. So we created an index based off of the FTSE NARI. That's, that's how we appear that. So that index can also be used, by the way, outside of an ETF, can be used in a retail SMA, can be used in an insurance product, can be used for a structured note. That index is our investment strategy. And so we just track it as one would track any benchmark. Great. Thank you. And, and you mentioned that it's a low cost solution. Its expense ratio is 33 basis points. That's, is that correct? It is. We think that it is a very fair price point given that category. We're proud of being able to offer a cost efficient version of what we do all over the spectrum. We have products that do different things. You know, we manage real estate uh, in, in parts of the globe, obviously not for 33 basis points. So we think this is a logical extension of what we do. So I mentioned in my introduction that real estate uh, traditionally has had a low correlation to equities. What role do you see CRED playing in a portfolio, specifically in a, achieving diversification? So, you know, Bob, it's, an, it's a very nuanced question uh, because we tend to think of REITs as part of the S&P. The S&P has an allocation to REITs. And so not everyone thinks about REITs as its own asset class. We think that REITs diver deserve their own focus. Because whether it's the S&P or the Russell, REITs represent 1% to 2 to 3% of that total market cap. 
And we think that anything that is worth investing in has to be more than 1%. If not, you're not going to feel it. So we're advocating for a more focused approach to real estate investing. Um, we know from efficient frontier work and minimum various optimization that depending on the time frame, REITs help reduce volatility at the portfolio level, even though REITs as an asset class is as shown volatility. Um, and we think that it's just common sense to diversify explicitly to real estate at this time of the market cycle. And I know some people might say we're super early. I'd rather be early when it comes to uh, investing and tilting those portfolio allocations. So you're doing this at a time when commercial real estate in particular is under severe pressure, particularly office space as the workforce is transitioning to have many more people work from home. Real, uh, residential real estate, I think, is held, holding up reasonably well. But why launch a REIT ETF now? <clears throat> and, and on top of that, what is the key differentiator between your ETF and the many other REIT products that advisors can find in the marketplace? So, I mean, the first question is, our clients' investment objectives don't shift with capital markets. They need income. They want income. We want to give them income. And we think that real estate is an, is an alternative way to get them income. So we advocate for real estate in that vein primarily to meet the client need um, where they want to be met. That also speaks to the price point. And by the way, if you were to look up real estate assets in Morningstar, for example, you'll find that the majority of those client assets are already in passive solutions as opposed to active ones. So we think that we're entering the marketplace at, at an opportune time. And we think that we're doing so with something that already speaks to client preferences. Now, within that, within the world of REITs, and you're so right to bring up some of those landmines, especially around office REITs. One of the things that is exciting when you study this, as we did as we in preparation for launching, is the variety of REITs that are out there and the variety of classifications. So you talk about office REITs as being sort of a watch out. I agree with you. That's only 2% of the portfolio. The majority of the portfolio is going to be in residential. It's going to be in industrial REITs, specialized, which might include things like warehouses. Um, and so if you can appreciate that REITs are much more than the empty offices that you're walking past every day, if you live in a city, you can see how real estate might not be a bad idea right now. You, uh, as I mentioned in, in my introduction, Columbia Threadneedle recently conducted a survey of advisor preferences regarding real estate. Tell me more about the survey results and whatever insights there were that you gained uh, from it about investor and advisor appetite for REITs? You know, we, we do surveys as often as we can. Our surveys are usually very confirming. You know, do you use real estate? Do you use REITs? And one of the, the things that we did find was this overwhelming belief that real estate was a perennial asset, asset class for an asset allocation. Um, and we found, as, as you had mentioned before, that the vast majority were going to maintain or increase their allocation to real estate over the next 12 to 24 months, which for us made all the difference in the world. We do this for every asset class, um, and we're very pleased that the audience already accepts passive as an appropriate way to allocate to real estate, that they prefer to have insight injected into all of their exposures, whether it's active or passive, um, and that liquidity is something of great importance to uh, our constituents. And that, by the way, is something we didn't hit on. But one of the difficult parts of real estate investing is the perceived illiquidity. We wanted to solve that and hit that straight on by not only focusing on REITs themselves, but also by packaging it in an ETF, which on the spectrum of things we find is very liquid and very suitable. Do you see investor demand for REITs growing over the next several years? We do. Um, I don't know how large it will get. Uh, it is an asset class that not everyone tends to focus on. Sometimes it's like emerging markets. It's an optional asset class. But we think that it's derived income. The fact that REITs must pay 90% of their income, we think that that income positioning is what's going to put REITs back on the map for people. Forgive the 
pun, um, and that you'll see more explicit allocations to real estate, perhaps even global, uh, as time moves on. Right. And this is a U.S. focused fund, right? It is a U.S. focused fund. Exactly. In what ways do you envision Columbia Threadneedle growing its REIT lineup in the future? I think I see more of a growth in our real estate than specific to REITs. Um, as I mentioned before, um, our footprint is global when it comes to real estate. We manage money, we finance development, we identify projects, we package them. We are uh, an unknown real estate big guy. I hate to use the word giant, right? Um, but we, we definitely are punching below our weight in terms of how expansive our footprint is. And so we would probably lean into that more and more uh, as the markets settle because we have a lot to offer globally in different packages. Are there any questions that I haven't asked yet that I should have? How excited are we about this product? You didn't ask me that. How excited are you about this product? Bob, we are very excited about this product. Um, and all kidding aside, I, I, I really feel good about having come to market with something that is uh, on time than something that uh, might be harder to compete with. If there's one key takeaway that you'd like to leave with our audience of advisors about the questions that they should be asking before they allocate to real estate and specifically to REITs, what would that be? I would urge clients to consider that the location of their investments is probably as important as the sector in which they invest. And so ask the question, where are these investments geographically? Wonderful. Well, we'll include some links in the notes that accompany this podcast where you can learn more about Columbia Threadneedle and its ETF product line. There'll be a link to the Columbia Threadneedle Exchange Traded Funds page and a link specifically to the CRED ETF, the Columbia Research Enhanced Real Estate ETF. Mark, is there anything else you'd like to add? Just it's been a pleasure to be here, Bob. You're welcome. And thank you for listening to the Gaining Perspective podcast with Bob Hoopsher, today featuring Mark Zaitoun of Columbia Threadneedle. To support our podcast, please share, subscribe, or leave a review to help make our podcast more findable for your friends and colleagues. You can subscribe to Gaining Perspective on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher.